a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Mohammed bin Salman Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, also known as EMBS, is the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, also serving as first Deputy Prime Minister, President of the Council for Economic and Development Affairs and Minister of Defense, the world's youngest office holder at the time. He has been described as the power behind the throne of his father, King Salman. He was appointed Crown Prince in June 2017 following his father's decision to remove Mohammed bin Nayyad from all positions making Mohammed bin Salman heir apparent to the throne. He has led a several successful reforms, which include regulations restricting the powers of the religious police, and the removal of the ban on female drivers. Further cultural developments under his reign include the first Saudi public concerts by a female singer, the first Saudi sports stadium to admit women, and an increased presence of women in the workforce. He has been accused of risking instability in the Middle East through his detention of human rights activists, intervention in Yemen, escalation of Saudi's diplomatic crisis with Qatar and the start of the diplomatic crisis with Lebanon, as well as his arrests of members of the Saudi royal family in November 2017. His proposed Saudi 2030 vision includes economic, social, and religious changes, and plans to list shares of the coveted, state-owned oil company Aramco. Despite promised reforms, the arrests and persecutions rate of human rights activists have risen under Mohammed bin Salman. Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch continue to criticize the Saudi government for its violations of human rights. Early Life and Education Mohammed bin Salman Al Saud was born on the 31st of August 1985 in Riyadh. He is the son of King Salman from his third spouse, Fada bint Fala bin Sultan bin Hathleen. She is the granddaughter of Rukhan bin Hithlain, who was the head of the Al Ajman tribe. Prince Mohammed bin Salman is the eldest of his full siblings. Turkey bin Salman, former chairman of the Saudi Research and Marketing Group, and Khalid bin Salman. Prince Mohammed holds a bachelor's degree in law from King Saud University, and has been called a lawyer by training. Career After graduating from college, Mohammed bin Salman spent several years in the private sector before becoming personal aide to his father. He worked as a consultant for the Experts Commission, working for the Saudi cabinet. On 15 December 2009, at the age of 24, Mohammed bin Salman entered politics as a special advisor to his father when the latter was the governor of Riyadh province. At this time, Mohammed bin Salman began to rise from one position to another such as Secretary General of the Riyadh Competitive Council, Special Advisor, to the Chairman of the Board for the King Abdulaziz Foundation for Research and Archives, and a member of the Board of Trustees for Alba Society in the Riyadh region. In October 2011, Crown Prince Sultan bin Abdulaziz died, and the current King Salman began his ascent to power by becoming second Deputy Prime Minister and Defence Minister in November 2011 and making Mohammed bin Salman his private advisor. Chief of the Court In June 2012, Crown Prince Naif bin Abdulaziz Al Saud died and Prince Mohammed bin Salman moved up into the number two position in the hierarchy as his father became the new Crown Prince and first Deputy Prime Minister. He soon began remaking the court in his own image. On 2 March 2013, the Chief of the Crown Prince Court Prince Saud bin Naif was appointed Governor of the Eastern Province, and Prince Mohammed bin Salman succeeded him in the post. He was also given the rank of Minister. On 25 April 2014 Prince Mohammed was appointed State Minister, Defence Minister and Deputy Crown Prince. On 23 January 2015, King Abdullah died, Salman took the throne and Prince Mohammed bin Salman was appointed Minister of Defence. He was also named as the Secretary General of the Royal Court on the same date. In addition he retained his post as the Minister of the State. In Yemen, the political unrest rapidly became a major issue for the newly appointed Minister of Defence, with rebel Houthis taking control of northern Yemen in late 2014 followed by President Abdrabba Monzur Hadi and his cabinet's resignation. Mohammed bin Salman's first move as minister was to mobilize a pan-GCC coalition to intervene following a series of suicide bombings in Sana'a via airstrikes against Houthis, and impose a naval blockade. In March 2015, 
Saudi Arabia began leading a coalition of countries allied against the Houthi rebels. According to the New York Times, although all agreed that the kingdom had to respond when the Houthis seized the Yemeni capital and forced the government into exile, Prince Mohammed bin Salman took the lead, launching the war in March 2015 without full coordination across the security services. Prince Mohammed bin Salman maintained restrictive coordination across security services and drove operations from the Maldives. Saudi National Guard Minister Prince Mutayeb bin Abdullah, who was out of the country, was not in the loop of the operations, and U.S. Secretary of Defense Ash Carter officially declared having trouble reaching him for days after the first strikes. While Prince Mohammed bin Salman sold the war as a quick win on Houthi rebels in Yemen and a way to put President Hadi back in power, however, it became a long war of attrition. In April 2015, Mohammed bin Naif and Prince Mohammed bin Salman respectively became Crown Prince and Deputy Crown Prince, under King Salman's royal decrees. Regarding his role in the military intervention, Prince Mohammed bin Salman gave his first on-the-record interview on 4 January 2016 to The Economist, which had called him the architect of the war in Yemen, denying the title. He explained the mechanism of the decision-making institutions actually holding stakes in the intervention, including the Council of Security and Political Affairs, Ministry of Foreign Affairs from the Saudi side. He added that the Houthis usurped power in the Yemeni capital Sinar before he served as Minister of Defense. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman was appointed Crown Prince on 21 June 2017, following his father's decision to depose Mohammed bin Naif making him heir apparent to the throne. The change of succession had been predicted in December 2015 by an unusually blunt and public memo published by the German Federal Intelligence Service, which was subsequently rebuked by the German government. On the day he became Crown Prince, U.S. President Donald Trump called Mohammed bin Salman to congratulate him on his recent elevation. Trump and the new Crown Prince pledged close cooperation on security and economic issues, according to the White House, and the two leaders also discussed the need to cut off support for terrorism, the recent diplomatic dispute with Qatar, and the push to secure peace between Israel and the Palestinians. Mohammed bin Salman told The Washington Post in April 2017 that without America's cultural influence on Saudi Arabia, we would have ended up like North Korea. Political and Economic Changes on 29 January 2015, Prince Mohammed was named the chair of the newly established Council for Economic and Development Affairs, replacing the disbanded Supreme Economic Commission. In April 2015, Prince Mohammed bin Salman was given control over Saudi Aramco by royal decree following his appointment as Deputy Crown Prince. Vision 2030 Prince Mohammed bin Salman took the leadership in the restructuring of Saudi Arabia's economy, which he officially announced in April 2016. When he introduced Vision 2030, the country's strategic orientation for the next 15 years, Vision 2030 plans to reform Saudi's economy towards a more diversified and privatized structure. It details goals and measures in various fields from developing non-oil revenues and privatization of the economy to e-government and sustainable development. At the inaugural Future Investment Initiative Conference in Riyadh in October 2017, Bin Salman announced plan for the creation of NEOM, a $500 billion economic zone to cover an area of 26,000 square kilometers on Saudi Arabia's Red Sea coast, extending into Jordan and Egypt. NEOM aims to attract investment in sectors including renewable energy, biotechnology, robotics and advanced manufacturing. The announcement followed plans to develop a 34,000 square kilometer area across a lagoon of 50 islands on Saudi Arabia's Red Sea coastline into a luxury tourism destination, with laws on a par with international standards. In a further effort to boost the tourism industry, in November 2017 it was announced that Saudi Arabia would start issuing tourist visas for foreigners, beginning in 2018. Prince Mohammed bin Salman's biggest bet was his plan to restore the Saudi Kingdom's dominance in global oil markets by driving the new competition into bankruptcy, by keeping the oil price low enough for a long enough period. Saudi Arabia persuaded OPEC to do the same. A few small players went bankrupt, 
but American frackers only shut down their less profitable operations temporarily, and waited for oil prices to go up again. Saudi Arabia, which had been spending $100 billion a year to keep services and subsidies going, had to admit defeat in November 2016. It then cut production significantly and asked its OPEC partners to do the same. Domestic Reforms Prince bin Salman has successfully lobbied for regulations restricting the powers of the religious police. Prince bin Salman established an entertainment authority that has hosted comedy shows, pro wrestling events, and monster truck rallies. In an interview with Al Arabiya, he also shared his idea for green cards for non Saudi foreigners. In February 2017, Saudi Arabia appointed its first woman to head the Saudi Stock Exchange. In April 2017, Bin Salman announced a project to build one of the world's largest cultural, sports and entertainment cities in al Qajir, southwest of Riyadh. The 334-square-kilometer city will include a safari and a Six Flags theme park. As of February 2018, Saudi women can now open their own business, without a male's permission. According to the Saudi Information Ministry, Mothers in Saudi Arabia can now retain immediate custody of their children after divorce without having to file any lawsuits. Further cultural developments followed in December that year with the Saudi Arabia's first public concert by a female singer. And in January 2018 a sports stadium in Jeddah became the first in the kingdom to admit women. In the same month it was announced that Saudi Arabia would reopen public cinemas after a ban of 35 years, with plans to have more than 2,000 screens running by 2030. The first measures undertaken in April 2016 included new taxes and cuts in subsidies, a diversification plan, the creation of a $2 trillion Saudi sovereign wealth fund, and a series of strategic economic reforms called the National Transformation Program. Prince bin Salman plans to raise capital for the sovereign wealth fund by selling off shares of Saudi Aramco, the state-owned petroleum and natural gas company, with the capital to be reinvested in other sectors such as to implement the diversification plans. However, as of October 2017, the plan for Aramco's IPO listing has been labeled a mess by The Economist. Prince Mohammed bin Salman slashed the state budget, freezing government contracts, and reducing the pay of civil employees as part of drastic austerity measures. Prince Mohammed is seen as the figure behind the removal of the ban on female drivers in September 2017. He has also chipped away at Saudi Arabia's Wali system. In October 2017, he said the ultra-conservative Saudi state had been not normal for the past 30 years, blaming rigid doctrines that have governed society in a reaction to the Iranian Revolution, which successive leaders didn't know how to deal with. According to him, Saudi Arabia is returning to what we were before, a country of moderate Islam that is open to all religions and to the world. In essence, he was telling the country's clerics that the deal the royal family struck with them after the 1979 siege of the Grand Mosque in Mecca is being renegotiated. Building an industrial culture was not compatible with Wahhabism. The Wahhabis were committed to fixed social and gender relationships. These were consistent with an economy built on oil sales. But industrialization requires a dynamic culture with social relations constantly shifting. According to Politico, EMPS wants to preempt a repetition of the downfall of the earlier Saudi states due to familial infighting, internal malaise, external frailty and failure to modernize. Mindful of this history, instead of waiting for today's Saudi state to weaken and fall, EMPS is trying to save the country before it collapses. Ayan Hirsi Ali claims that, if MBS succeeds in his modernization efforts, Saudis will benefit from new opportunities and freedoms, and the world will benefit from curtailing the Wahhabi radicalization agenda. A decade from now, the kingdom could look more like the United Arab Emirates, its prosperous and relatively forward-looking neighbor. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries Would you like to know more?